Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBook Studio. We're again in the studio with Mark Spencer. He's going to show us some stuff with motion. Some stuff with motion. <laughs> some stuff with motion. <laughs> Here we go again with some more stuff about motion. Mo shapes and masks and... Shapes and masks and how to go between the two, from a shape to a mask and from a mask to a shape. Are ma masks and shapes are interchangeable in motion? They are very close cousins. They're very close cousins. But they have different they, purposes. They do, and it's very useful to convert one to the other. Okay, so I show excellent. You. So here we are in motion, and I have a, a background, and I have this guitar from iStockPhoto.com. And what I want to do is I want to uh, basically uh, mask it or make a guitar shape. So I'm are gonna you gonna are you gonna mass with a busy to gonna mass that whole thing out here on the show? No, Live. but I'm gonna I'm gonna start it. Okay, okay? Cause I'm gonna, it, it's really not bad. But right. um, so I'm gonna use the Bezier pen tool uh -huh. down here at the bottom, and what I'm gonna do is hold down Command Space Bar to get in close here, and I'm gonna click, and I can just start to I'm gonna hold the space bar down again to pan. I'm holding the space bar down, dragging, click, and then click drag. If you dra oh, click drag, yeah. you can drag out a little. Um, Bezier handle. Bezier handle, right. And as I go along, I can come back and fix these later, or while I'm going, I can go back to a point while I'm working. If you hold down the Option key, you can break these handles so they're not, um, you know, together. Right. Um, so they're almost like non-uniform in how you're yeah. adjusting either side of them. And you hit, hold the Control key down, you can link them so that they both move together. Oh, nice. Or you can choose to break that so they move separately. I'm control clicking, or you can choose align handles and they'll pop back aligned again. And again, option, uh, holding the option so it's key will like break those. more like seesaw on the align. Yeah, so you need to be able to do all that kind of stuff to sure. kind of fix these. So you just go along and outline this guy uh, all the way around. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to oh, do it. No, stop. no, please go. I'm in. <laughs> I just want to get the idea <laughs> yeah. that um, it's it's very flexible tool, very easy it to use. It seems really easy. Is it better with a pen tool, like a, wha a whack on tablet, um, or is it better with them? If you like using Wacom tablet, it can be faster okay. to do that. Okay, so I'm going to shift Z to fit this back to the window. I actually did that already, and once I once I created that shape originally, I dragged it into my file browser. So here it is. Save I, it as a save shape. Yeah. So this is just a layer. There it is in the preview window. It's just a layer for motion that I drag that layer uh, to my desktop, you know, and then put it in a folder. But it shows up as a little shape. So I can take this guy, I'll import it into the project, and you can see it matches that guitar there. In fact, let's. Let's change the color so we can we can see it. Nice. Okay, so that's my shape. But you might say, okay, that's great, but what I really wanted, I didn't want a shape. I wanted to mask the guitar. In other words, let me turn this off for a minute. I want to see the guitar without that white background. Right, see what, right? what it's white, you want to see the background yeah. come through, right? Yeah, so, so one option that people do, like, oh, I'll use an image mask, because you can choose object, um, add image mask, and then you can put something in there, so I could draw the shape into that, that area, and the shape will then create the mask for it. But there's a better way. Well, there's another way. I won't say better. I'm going to undo that. But there's an, an, an interesting another approach, and that is this. I'm going to zoom in close here. I'm going to take this shape, let's turn it back on, and I'm going to drag it on top of the guitar, and I'm going to wait for a minute. Okay? I'm going to release the mouse, and it immediately applies it as a mask. So it just took a shape and changed it just into a mask. Just by dropping it onto that layer. Just by dragging it onto it, changed it into a mask. Interesting. And now that uh, guitar is masked, so I could take that guitar now and maybe turn it a little bit. It stays masked. I shift it down, and you can see my mask itself uh, doesn't exactly match this car. Let's move it in a little bit. Shift S, and then let's maybe move this over a little bit. So I've got a mask on that. Now, you might say, that's great, but what if I want a shape? Because say I want both a mask and a shape, and a shape. Because maybe I want to draw an outline around that guitar. So what I can do is I can take that mask. First, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that mask and drag it onto the group. And here's where I need to wait. I didn't need to wait before. It just converts to a mask. But now I'm taking the mask. Yeah, I was wondering what you were waiting for. That yeah, last I know. Time. I waiting know. for what? Okay, waiting just for waiting, Godot, what? waiting for Godot. <laughs> right. Yeah. But in this case, you do when you drag right. a mask onto a group, right. you wait for a minute because you've got a choice to move the mask to the group or this really should say, convert the mask to a shape. Right, because right really now saying. it's a mask, and it's saying moving. OK, yeah. I can see why it's confusing. It's a little confusing, confusing. yes. But if I choose this, yeah. all of a sudden, I get my shape back. Nice. Not quite what I wanted to do. I'm going to command Z to undo that. I'm going to hold the Option key down while I do this, because I want to keep this mask. I don't want to convert it to a shape. Right. I, I want to convert it to a shape, but keep this guy. So holding the Option key, 
It drags a copy. That's why the little plus sign is there, right? So I'm dragging a copy of it now this it time. Now it says copy. And now copy shape to group. And now I've got both the shape and, and the mask. mask. Okay? Is that cool or what? That is very now, cool. Now, the thing is, it's this. I transform the other thing. It doesn't line up anymore. So let's, um, I could either sort of untransform that, but I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go hit F1 to go to the properties inspector. I'm going to take this word transform, which represents all, all of these properties, values, yes. right? We're going to see if this is going to work or not. And I'm going to drag it right onto that shape. Not quite. So the shape actually scaled down more than but it should have. It should have. Yeah, but it depends what the original mask's I scale think. was. But my goal here Still really fast. is just I'm going to scale it back little. up to fit. Okay, I don't care if it's exactly perfect here. And now what I'm going to do is turn on the outline instead of the fill so that that guitar just has like a nice um, kind of outline stroke to it. Okay, so now I'm using the mask for both. Move it up and over a little bit. Um, I'm using it for both a mask to mask the guitar from the background right. and then as a um, uh, as an outline. Well, right. It's it. Basically, it's a shape where you turned off the fill and now it's just essentially a stroke. Right. And now that it's a stroke, rather than just stroking it with this solid color, I can stroke it with any of the shape styles that we have. Ah, so look at instead, that. I could use a light, a light streak. So let's select that. And now instead, I've got this um, nice light streak that flies around the guitar. Oh my gosh, that's great. So this gets a little more into paint strokes than now that we've got this ability to um, change that paint stroke into something else. Well, you just transformed okay. it in something magical. I mean, this distill image and shape and a mass, and now this, you've got this animated, animation right. animation around it. That's freaking cool. With, with no keyframes, no right. behaviors, just using an animated uh, paint stroke. So just to give you an idea, the main, the main idea here is that you can go back and forth between shapes and paint strokes so in other words, or what shapes I, and masks. What I hear you saying is that all the work that you put into making the uh, initial uh, shape doesn't go to waste. You can right. convert it like that, say, oh, i got to make a mask yeah. doing the same thing. Because sometimes I accidentally choose, you know, there's a set of masking tools here. They're not selectable because a mask has to be applied to something. So let me choose the guitar here. That's why here. it's better to start out as a shape. Yeah, well. Either one, you can go back to the other one because right. you could start to draw a mask and realize, oh, I really wanted a shape, or you draw a shape and you're like, oh, okay. rats, I wanted a mask. I have to start all over again. Nope. You can just convert one to the other very, very That's, easily. That really makes things much easier. And that is today's little tip. Excellent. That's more than a tip. That's a, that's a huge time saver. Uh, Hopefully. Yeah. So users can actually learn about shapes and masks with your new tutorial, Mastering was shapes, shapes paint, paint strokes, strokes, and, and masks. masks. Shapes, paint strokes, <laughs> and masks. Which is, which is amazing. So you can get that at RippleTraining.com. And uh, thank you for tuning in uh, to another exciting episode of MacBake Studio. We'll see you next time.